Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we getting on? Do apologise for the uh, slight drought lately. As those of you who watched my channel update the other day will know, things have gotten uh, a little more stressful in my life lately, so it's uh, had a bit of a knock-on effect on the old creati creativity, rather. However, we are back, and we are on a whole new save, new building save, as I've had a few uh, mod issues with the uh, previous one, so... We're going to start out at Drumlin Diner. Actually, during the course of this one, I just hit level 14, so I now have local leader 2 as well, which is uh, very handy. So, I figured Drumlin's in a good location to sort of start out, a good jumping off point for a lot of the sort of northern and western commonwealth. So I thought we'll fortify it and make it into a uh, Minuteman outpost. So, we'll start off with closing the two main approaches to the site up. We're going to put gates on here. These are automatically closing ones, otherwise much the same as the standard ones. That's in the uh, auto-closing doors and gates mod I've got. So we'll just get that lined up. I'm going to uh, work it with the edge of the debris there that I can't actually delete at the moment. Not that I particularly want to, but anyway. And with the uh, rise in the ground. On this side, it's a case of lining up with the road here again, and sort of bearing in mind where I want the walls to run, which is just outside the guardrail there. So it sort of needs to line up so that it'll uh, meet up neatly there. And same thing on this side. So that's about right. We'll just pull it down with the pillar. There we go. So, some lookout posts. My initial plan for these was to put uh, guards on the top, but that uh, didn't work out so well. For now, we're going to use the scaffolding as a frame, but as I'm not big fan of the look and the contrast doesn't really work with this one so I'll uh, dress it up but it does form a nice solid basis for it so here we're just lining up with the gate and with where I want the end of the wall to go and we'll lift it up the idea being that uh, the floor level will be a little bit below the top of the wall so when I put railings on there it'll provide cover and be about level with the rest of it snappy Another piece on there is to give us a place to climb up. I want to use, rather than the scaffolding stairs for this, I'm going to use the normal shack stairs because they're more in keeping with the rest of the uh, walls in the build. So there we go. So I'm using um, the scaffolding flooring to then snap an ordinary shack floor to because if I remember rightly, to be fair I didn't test it, but... Um, then the stairs won't actually snap, or well, those particular stairs won't actually snap to the scaffolding floor, so... Unfortunately, the shack floor, the regular one, won't snap to the scaffolding frame either, but it will snap to the scaffolding flooring. So it's a bit of a, a build order workaround sort of job, but we get there. So, there's the stairs. Shack floor, uh, scaffolding floor rather. Snap the shack floor onto the side of that. Snap the stairs onto the shack floor. And once they're in, you can take it out and mix and match whichever way you want. Which is what we'll be doing over here. Now with this one, obviously the ground's uh, dictating a certain amount of what we can do. We also want to be able to see out from the top to the right and to the crossroads just up there, as uh, Drumlin gets attacked quite regularly by raiders. Largely due to the fact that there's a couple of... Um, spawn points around for random encounters. That crossroads just to the right of here is one of them. And there's a little campfire raider spawn on as well just beyond it, so... Onto a decent place you can stand, look out, and uh, cover the roads from. That's what this will be. Again, working with the build order there. And there we go. And one more round to the right. Left. Thing. <laughs> on this side. So I had initially just tried to put one scaffolding in here and then snap onto it, but due to the debris and everything, it didn't really want to go in or it's not close enough. I end up changing my mind in a minute on how I want this to look, but snapped it together away from the position I wanted it and then used the pillar to just group select it in. That's for much more pl precise placement. Yeah. Get the floors in. The stairs on there. There we go. Unfortunately, that sticks out a little bit too far and kind of closes the entrance off for anybody coming in. Sort of gets in the way a bit. So, quick little change. Same principle as before. 
scaffolding floor, shack floor, and then we'll pull this one out and just connect directly. Which I didn't think was going to work with the debris down there, but uh, it actually works better. So there we go. So I'll skip over a fair chunk of building the walls here. We'll get the general principle down and then uh, we'll sort of move on. So you can see what we're doing, but at the same time, uh, sort of put your own mark on it if you want to do something similar. Uh, you can use some improvised bits and pieces here to keep the scrappy look and just look like a anybody can build it sort of uh, appearance. A little bit of chain link fence, sort of mark out the height for the railings there. I use the regular railings in a few places, but for here I wanted to use something a little different. Mix things up a bit. So group select in the half wall. Get it positioned, and there we go. Same again with this one. And on this side. Just close up the gap a little bit. It's a bit low for a railing really on this side, but once the wall attaches to it, it won't be a problem anyway, so it'll be inside the settlement rather than outside. Mix and match a little with the USO shack railings here. There we go. Well, this one, it didn't really want to snap, I think because it's too close to the gate, so it's a, a little case of group select here. It's nice and easy. Pillars are a little too far up, really. Only just tall enough there. But uh, we managed. You see, it's barely touching the ground there. If it been any higher, it wouldn't have worked. But there we go. Nice and neat. Or nice and scrappy, depending on how you want to look at it. And we're going to close up the edges of this scaffolding on the right using the half walls again. I had to use the rug glitch for this one as uh, the struts supporting the gate are starting to get, into the, get in the way there rather. There we go, neat and tidy. I'm going to use a corrugated one just to mix and, max, mix and match even the textures a little bit. Hmm, getting tongue tied today. One of the uh, major motivations behind starting a new save was that um, I'd used Scrap That Commonwealth on a couple of recent builds and I was having major issues with getting the pillar to sinking and even disabling the mod wasn't solving that particular problem. And, uh, I had been intending to build at uh, Tempines Bluff but went up there after the two previous builds and it still had the problem even though I'd never had the mod on anywhere near there. So. I decided to try a new save, so stripped all the mods out, right back to basics, even uh, uninstalled and reinstalled the game, set up the new save, put all, uh, most of the old mods back in, and uh, fine-tuned things a little bit. And it seems so far to be solving the problem. I did have a, a little bit of the issue in Sanctuary, I was just sort of setting up early on, but for the most part, the problem seems to be solved. I think that issue I had in Sanctuary is just one that crops up anyway. It's been such a long time since I built anything major there, I can't really remember, but I do seem to recall there are a few places that are just plain awkward there, so that may or may not be mod related. So with this one, I could probably have taken the staircase off and been able to get the concrete pillar in a little closer, but for some stubborn reason I didn't, so grab the conduit, which is uh, always very handy to get a little bit of reach with. And then group select, the whole, group select the whole lot, rather, to get that board in on the side and close up the edge of the steps there. I had thought about just putting two matching uh, staircases there, but they look a bit awful as they don't sit that close together, so... There we go. Rug and pillar for this one, as the uh, debris is getting in the way again. I also wanted to sort of sit right up against the uh, scaffolding there, so the struts again are starting to cause collision, collision issues. There we go. 
It sort of struck me before when I was editing this just how much detail there actually is in some of these pieces when you actually stop and look at them. That explains in a way uh, why it's sort of the the vanilla stuff is relatively limited because there's just so many high detail pieces that Bethesda have created for this that it's kind of unsurprising really that uh, they've only got so many of them given the amount of time that was taken. However, with the help of a few mod devs, a few of the pieces they've used in other places and not provided to us are now available, so that opens up the options quite considerably. So we'll just get our angles right and close this gap up. There we go. Not want any too obvious clipping going on. There we go. I actually pushed this up a little bit too high initially, so the uh, top edge was clipping through. No, just pulling it down. There you go, you can just about to see it at the top there, but. There we are, yeah, clipping too wide, way too much, so we'll just grab that again with the pillar and nudge it down a little bit. There we go, nice and hidden. Neat and tidy. Another railing on there, another rug and pillar job, and we'll close off the edge there. And that's basically the technique for doing this. I'm going to do two more on the other gates and one around... I'm going to do two more on the other gates and one around the, the back as well because there's a little. There's actually quite a big approach that I'm going to close off, but there's um, a smaller um, dip in the ground that works quite well, which you'll see in just a moment, for uh, a sort of smaller back gate. So we'll work around that in a minute. But again, it's the same basic technique, so there's only so much repetition we need in one video. This is the other gate, all tidied up and sealed off few gaps that were a little awkward to close on this one, so hence the chain link and the Nuka Cola machine. With this particular piece, most of it is a single piece added by the junk wall collection, which you'll find on my mod list. There's a couple of uh, side walls that have been attached on. And those are quite handy and look like the part quite look like they were initially part of it rather. And, uh, the one drawback to that thing, unfortunately, is it the top surface is not buildable or in any way pathed, so unfortunately nobody will be able to use it apart from the player, but with a little bit of work we managed to get a, a turret up there anyway. So, again from the junk wall collection, there are these long stretches of pre-built walls. Some of them are used at uh, Oberland last time as well. They certainly speed the process up a bit. Although I did a lot of uh, bespoke stuff as well, so... Whilst it helped along this front edge, a lot of it was sort of improvised as well. And that does take a bit of time. We'll just rug and pillar. And move the next section in as well. There are some larger sections of wall in there, but... As uh, is often the case with some of these bigger sections, we find placing them down at all is hard work. And then when you have got them placed, making sure they're not catching on anything in order to rug glitch them is a bit of a nightmare. So we're going to mix this up with some of the walls from Aslam's Junk Wall Pack. Which is, this is one of those. Because it's a bit chunky, using a, the larger rug is much, much easier. The connection point's actually somewhere in the middle of those tyres, so if you use a small rug it's kind of hard to get hold of. There we go. One advantage to the slightly scrappy ends to these uh, prefab walls from the junk wall collection is you can make it look like the sections next to it are properly connected and the plank overlapping planks are holding the thing together, which is quite cool. And there we go, neat and tidy. Just one last gap to close up on the front here. Just use an ordinary junk wall for that. There we go, let's have a look around the outside. So just one more, there's actually one more after this. There we go, looking good. So we have one small gap at the left hand end here. And I'm just going to use uh, a few bits and pieces to create a, an improvised barricade here. So a warehouse piece, just for a change. And we can actually get it into position, there we go sinks into the debris so it's not floating, which is great. And we'll grab a bit of chain link to plug the gap. One should fit nicely. 
And that's level 13. As I say, I did load more off camera on the walls, so that nudged me over the next level as well, which is great. It means I'll be able to put some uh, workbenches in into the next parts of the build. However I decide to approach that, I'll be yet to make my mind up. And there we go. That's the front edge sealed off, and we're going to repeat the principle around the rest. For now, let's have a look at the finished product, seeing that it's more of the same for the most part. They're not really intended to be defences, more just sort of marking the entrance there. A couple of pieces from Aslan's junk wall, junk wall pack, workshop junk wall pack specifically. So a few turrets up on the top, a few more bits and pieces to give it a little bit of life and decoration. I had intended to use some of the guards that are placeable in USO, but they have a habit of dropping through the ground onto the just sort of the earth when you place them up on defence emplacements like that. So I ended up taking them out rather than having to constantly reposition them and just replacing them with sort of bespoke turrets. But we'll take a bit more of a look at those in a minute. A few more bits of barricade around, bits of uh, rubbish just to slow down any attackers as they run up to the walls. Also using the uh, natural elevation at the back of Drumlin here to uh, make the walls a bit more imposing. So this is our back entrance. I had a lot of trouble trying to uh, clip these little ramps in so that you can approach the back gate there without catching on them. Uh, the character's feet just kept hitting the end of the ramp. Or it ended up floating. Uh, getting that middle ground was hard work, but uh, it's come out okay. So again, some more of the uh, prefabs up there, and then a few gaps closed off like we did on the other side. Turret peeking over. Some of Aslam's junk walls at the back there again. And a few more bits and pieces. There's one of the guards that disappeared. I actually removed them, but she disappeared for some reason, and that's where she turned out to be. With this section here, you've got uh, the two cars are a single piece, but again, they don't have a placeable upper surface. So basically use the concrete pillar and the conduit just to group select everything onto the top there. So otherwise it's a little low down. There we go. Corner's looking considerably more secure than it was before. Some spikes to keep people at a distance. I'll swing by and say hello to Codsworth. I'll take a look around the inside. Yeah, up to the front entrance. Nice view for the turrets there. I'll have a look around it from the inside now. So there's quite a bit that I couldn't remove, including those tables when I was scrapping stuff. But uh, it does kind of keep the feeling of the place intact, which is quite cool. Again, I could have used more aggressive um, scrapping mods, but that's what caused the trouble last time, so. So there we go. For the most part, although the walls are reasonably imposing from the outside, they don't, don't appear too overbearing on the inside, so. Quite happy with how that's turned out. A little bit of decoration behind them, make them look a bit more secure and scrappy. And these little uh, floor pieces and stuff, it's all just group selected together and then just placed on the top so that we can actually walk up here and position things up there. There's somewhere to fire over the top from. You can see the turret standing on a table there. That just uh, snaps straight to the top of the table, no problem. With ones like this, it's a case of just group selecting them together and then moving them in with group select as a single unit. However, as I said, on the top of this, there's no actual floor surface. Although you can walk on it, you can't place things on it. So I group selected an invisible rug up there just to provide a surface that will do the job. It's a, a bit of a tight squeeze, but the pillar in the corner there by the tree we managed. Use one of the tall, narrow ones. So we're actually able to place that in. Got well, a nice view over the top. So, walls are marking out the area we've got to work with. See, we've got plenty of space back here. We'll look towards building player homes and workshops and that sort of thing over the next couple of weeks. Firmly mounted on our box there. It's a little bit of decoration still needed on this, but for now, it's looking 
fairly ready. Nice clear view down the road there towards another random encounter point. Quick swing along the back of the walls. I wanted to keep guardrails in because they're um, sort of fundamentally part of the design of the place, so keep the spirit of the place intact. And there we go. So, thank you very much for watching, ladies and gents. It's always very much appreciated. For those of you who enjoyed, I'm sure you know what to do. And if you have a look down in the description, you'll find a couple of links to some options to support the channel a little more directly if you'd like to do that as well. There's more information in the recent channel update if you're interested. But for now, thank you very much, and I'll be speaking to you all very, very soon.